Hello, I'm Dan Sweeney, the director of the Institute for Enterprise Ethics at the Daniels College of Business here on the University of Denver campus. We have just completed the third executive breakfast discussion with senior executives and independent directors, this time on the topic of short-termism and ethical behavior. A lot of research over the past decade has suggested that excessive emphasis on short-term performance not only impedes long-term strategy development and long-term value creation, but also, in the words of Malcolm Salter of the Harvard Business School, quote, invites institutional corruption, end quote. Both of these issues were discussed with a lively conversation among the breakfast guests this morning. We have invited two of those guests to join us and share some of their impressions and experiences from this discussion. Bob Vanerak is the author with his son Greg of Triple Crown Leadership, recently published by McGraw-Hill. Bob is a well-known speaker and consultant on issues of leadership and values-based management. In his previous career, Bob was a turnaround CEO of two New York Stock Exchange corporations. Ernie Sampius is an independent director and chair of the audit committees of two NASDAQ-traded corporations. Ernie has also served as the Chief Financial Officer of four publicly traded companies during his career. Ernie, welcome and thanks Thank for joining Thank us. Thank you, Dan. So, gentlemen, we've had a very active discussion this morning, a terrific conversation among some pretty uh, experienced people, a lot of points of view, a lot of opinions expressed. I'd like to ask each of you to suggest maybe one or two items that came up this morning that you think are particularly important or had a particularly common agreement among the participants. Bob? Well, I was struck by not just the focus on some mechanisms to try and control these things. What can we do with the compensation program? How could we put in some regulations about uh, trading and things like that? But the general discussion about leadership. And really, if we're going to change this, it's a cultural matter. And the focus there on the role of the board of directors. The board as leaders to really instill a culture of character and say, we're going to manage this enterprise for the long run. I thought that was very incisive, Dan. Terrific. Ernie, anything to add to that? Well, I you know, certainly agree with Bob on the points he made. And in addition, for me, it was really interesting to understand the importance uh, in, in this whole discussion of short-termism of the uh, performance management system. And again, to Bob's point, uh, the board really sets the performance management system. And I think uh, that is really what came home to me in terms of how important uh, and what drives management and behavior is the uh, performance management system and the rewards from that system. Terrific. Thanks. Uh, those were good, good points. I remember them both. Do you believe there is a, there is a real relationship between short-termism and ethical behavior or at least ethical temptation. <laughs> Ernie, do you have a view on that? Well, I've seen that firsthand, Dan, in my career. And uh, I think that uh, there's examples where uh, you could point to, such as Berkshire Hathaway, uh, where there's no linkage. Uh, but in my experience, the companies I've been with, particularly uh, small to mid-cap tech companies that are very driven on a quarterly performance basis, I've definitely seen the linkage. Bob, what's your experience? Well, as I said at breakfast, Dan, I grew up in a culture where it was all maximized shareholder value, and that got translated to quarterly earnings. So unfortunately, I'm one of those guys who borrowed sales from quarter two to make quarter one, or looked at the reserves and said, what can we do to make our earnings estimate to the penny? And as I look back on those things, uh, we certainly were not only going up to the line of ethical behavior, but sometimes over that line. I think there's a direct correlation between short-termism and ethical behavior. Well, there's no, um, 
No, no equivocation on that, guys. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bob, you, you've run a couple of uh, fairly large uh, uh, publicly traded companies. Um, are, are there times when a short-term performance perspective uh, is necessary, when the CEO and the board ought to take a short-term perspective, even though it may be detrimental to some long-term goals? The answer is yes and no. As we talk about in Triple Crown leadership, and the subtitle is important here, building excellent ethical and enduring organizations. We believe that's what the future organizations ought to be doing. But there are times when one has to do a tilt. One has to say, I have to do something to make my short-term numbers, otherwise I'm going to go out of business. And if I'm out of business, nothing good is going to happen. On the, on the other hand, there are times when you might have to say, Short-term investors, you're going to have to pause for a while because we're making an investment for the long term that is really essential. So there are times you have to tilt. But the no answer is on the 30 ethical behavior, you can't ever tilt on that. Because once you do that, you start down that slippery slope and it's much easier to justify unethical behavior the second and the third time. Good points. Ernie, you sit on a couple of important uh, boards. Uh, uh, how, how do you view this? Are, are there times when you have to take a short-term perspective? Yes, I mean, we had an example last year in one of the companies I'm the audit committee chair for that, and we're always very focused on uh, quarterly earnings, and, and, but in spite of the focus on quarterly earnings, we had a very difficult um, personnel decision to make regarding uh, having to terminate uh, one of the senior managers of our two main divisions. And uh, it was a very difficult decision because we had no bench strength to replace this individual and we knew in the short term our, our, our performance was going to suffer as a result of letting him go. But there were issues involved that we all thought it was the right decision long term to make. And uh, it's like pulling a Band-Aid off. It hurts when you pull it off, but uh, it's the right, you know, right thing to do. You get over the pain, you move on, and that's, the, you know, that, that's an example where I felt we made a very short-term decision, but it was for the long-term benefit of the company. Terrific. Good. Thanks. How, how does this issue of sh short-termism or long-termism look? From, from that particular vantage point? Well, I can remember very clearly the pressure that one is under. Those quarterly earnings calls are brutal. And as uh, Steve said this morning, there are people on those calls who are raiders and traders and investors. And unfortunately, you get most of the questions on those calls from the raiders and the traders. They want to know if they should bail on the stock as soon as the call is over or not. And the pressure that builds up on you, especially if they do bail on your stock, and all of a sudden you're down three points or five points, and the board is calling you saying, what's going on? So it really is tempting to say, what can I do? Are you sure we've scrubbed everything in the reserves? And you got to say, wait a minute, that's just not the way we can run this. We can't let the raiders and traders dictate our performance as leaders. Good. So, uh, so Arnie, do you, do you have any, any uh, response to Bob? Any well, other perspective? Well, to Bob's point, uh, in terms of the quarterly earnings calls and your, your perspective from a CEO perspective, uh, I have a, even a, a better per, or a little bit different perspective as the CFO of uh, publicly traded companies doing the quarterly earnings calls. Uh, what I always was interested in as a CFO was not to wait till after the call was done. I usually had the after hours trading on to understand what the pulse of the comments were we were making in the script so I could see what was happening in after hours trading as we were actually doing the earnings call. So, uh, and that usually was a good predictor of what would happen the next day in terms of the stock price. And now we get them on tweets. <laughs> Somebody in the back of the room is saying, oh, look what the tweets are saying. <laughs> okay. 
A lot of the conversation this morning uh, put a lot of the blame for the short-termism, long-termism, and its correction onto the board of directors. Ernie, you, you sit on two, two boards and you're uh, chair of two audit committees. What does this issue look like from, from your seat at the board? Well, from an audit committee chairman, uh, I really have a different hat than I used to wear as a CFO. Uh, and now I'm actually uh, in charge of being the impartial judge of the accounting decisions and judgments uh, that the CFO and the CFO team have made in producing the quarterly results. So I, I, I always look at and try to understand what the quality of earnings are. And are there any issues from a judgment standpoint that would impair or impede the quality of the earnings that we're about to report publicly? I put a lot of emphasis on the uh, questioning the CFO around those judgment calls in terms of using reserves. Uh, and I also put a lot of emphasis in questioning the audit committee partner from the ac accounting firm that we use and for either doing the annual audit or the interim review of the financial results. So for me, uh, I take all the knowledge I had as a CFO, uh, and now I use it uh, as a impartial judge in terms of really trying to understand and get under the quality of earnings that the CFO and the management team are producing that they're asking us to sign off on and report publicly. Bob, uh, you, you've been a CEO uh, with uh, dealing with your own boards. Uh, how, how, do, how do you think it, this view uh, appears from the, from the boardroom? Well, I think it takes a lot of courage and on the part of the CEO and a lot of self-confidence to open up the channels of communication with the audit committee, with the external auditors, with the internal audit group. I remember years ago, CEOs were paranoid about what those folks thought about him or her, primarily him in the old days. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to guard those communications. And I think today's age of transparency, as Ernie is describing, and what they need right now, it requires a CEO to say, I've got to open those channels. I've got to be comfortable. I've got to get over my fears to let them talk to those people. And we as an organization will be better off as a result. Excellent observation. Good. One of the comments that Professor Patelli made in his opening comments was, unfortunately, there's no antidote yet for short-termism. So that was fairly pessimistic. So how do you guys feel about the future? Is, is there a way that boards and executive committees uh, can, can get a hold of this issue and make some progress? Bob, what do you think? Well, I'm optimistic. Uh, we can't change human nature, but we can influence human behavior. And I think the work of the Institute for Enterprise Ethics, schools like the Daniels College of Business, are really focusing on these kinds of things. It may be too late for our generation to change, but I'm convinced there's a sea change coming in capitalism over the next 10 or 20 years. And I think the work that we're doing here, talking about these things, is going to make a big difference. Terrific. Ernie, what do you think? Well, I'm also, to Bob's point, I'm optimistic as well. I think over the last 10 years, I think with the changes we've seen as a result of regulation, number one, with Sarbanes-Oxley implementation, the Dodd-Frank bill, um, the focus on insider trading, there's been a lot of um, heightened attention around, from a regulatory standpoint, doing the right thing. I think secondly, I've seen positive uh, trends in terms of board composition by splitting the CEO uh, position from the chairman and now having a CEO and lead director position. I think that's been very helpful, at least in the boards that I serve on. And then finally, I think a lot of attention has been, uh, that I've seen, on the performance management systems and what compensation systems boards are putting in place to drive the right behavior, long-term behavior for the management teams. Well, gentlemen, your optimism is very heartening. I feel, I feel much, much better than I did earlier when I came into this meeting, and I think that's a very good note to end on. I want to thank you both for taking the time this morning, not only participate in the breakfast, but also to help us with this interview. And we want to thank, uh, thank you, those of you who are viewing this, this interview for your interest in this topic.
Thank you very much. Thanks, Tim.